What's up guys, it's Avery, hope you've been well. It is somehow already April, and also snowing outside right now, which is crazy. But it's already April, so school year's coming to a close. If you guys are at work, hope it's going well too, wherever you are, whatever you are doing. But it's time to sit down and talk about my favorites from last month. So that's pickups, movies, and music. Let's do it. All right, this month I have two awesome shirts to share with you guys and then one item that I made as well. Wanted to bring this up first because we talked about the documentary in last month's monthly favorites video. And this shirt right here, they might as well have been working on it in the documentary where they were showing uh, the fabled embroidery factories in India. This is an insane shirt. It's also a very normal and traditional shirt, but just these little things <laughs> except except for the embroidery right here this isn't such a little thing but it is just a standard shirt size 48 fits me nice and slim but it has these a little bit elongated and flared curved collar points which i absolutely love the material i think was an extraordinary choice or i should say the pattern on the fabric here it is a red white and beige striped pattern so from afar it almost has a pink look because you have that red, you have that light tan, you have that white all mixing together so you get a very skin tone, pink sort of color from afar. But up close, it's a little bit more mature than that. But that sort of pink color is incredible with the flowers from afar, which are embroidered with these crazy metallic threads. But besides that, it really is a very standard shirt. It does have some lovely darts in the back keeping it a bit plain and away from being the traditional American office shirt, as far as traditional goes. Next up, another item that is equally crazy, although it may not look like it just from a quick glance. This is a Carol Christian Powell shirt, and I think that this shirt should serve as a good introduction to the designer. If you aren't familiar, Austrian born designer often noted for his experimental materials and shape, but equally, if not even more so, for how technically crafted the garments are. This shirt, for example, is a mastery in tailoring, but also a little bit eccentric and a little bit off the cuff. This shirt, as far as the fabrication goes, is 100% cotton, but it's very, very thick, very, very structured, has some sort of treating going on, really hovering in between a shirt and a jacket. Everyone always says it's a jacket anyway. Um, another thing that might add to that is, of course, this double-breasted closure going across here, which is absolutely mad, and that combined with, my mind is just going right now, and that combined with these really wide collar points just makes it the ultimate Avery shirt. Are you kidding? I was just scrolling through an online consignment shop, and I saw through the screen the shirt staring at me. Chef, vampire, beautifully made, beautifully tailored, pretty much fits me perfectly as far as my slim, lanky self go. That Those adjectives kind of meant the same thing. As far as my elongated self goes with the structured material, but that kind of explains it. There are all these awesome features as far as experimenting with the opening of this jacket, as far as the material goes, but then the sleeves that are tailored, this back seam, everything, everything is just so meticulously done. This is a beautiful shirt, but it's also a really, really fun one to wear. A beautiful as far as quality goes, as far as not a single corner was cut making this shirt. But that isn't to say this isn't an absolutely otherworldly shirt, if that makes sense. And the third item I wanted to share was another belt I made. Last month, I sort of took my take at a traditional menswear belt that I shared with you, but this one was much more complex, took a lot more trial and error and a lot more experimentation. So it was more of a challenge, more of a learning process, but was also a lot more fun. Um, I even experimented with stamps under these rings right here uh, to try and do some sort of commentary on bondage and where that all is right now, because I think that's pretty funny. But really just a great learning process I wanted to share with you. I might be selling a few of these at our, at our New York store for Stotts Ballet later this month, later in April, which is insane. So there'll be a few different variants there and such, but I just wanted to bring that up because maybe something that you guys make will end up being your favorite thing for some time. 
That's usually the case for me, especially when it comes to things like Stotz Ballats. So there you go, little recommendation. Now for movies, another month went by where I didn't go to the theater a single time. I was hoping that I would see Annihilation. I guess that's a consolation for me seeing a new movie, but it turns out it only released on Netflix internationally. And really it was just another month of being super swamped with school, this New York City event planning, working with Kaylee in New Mexico, and the future of Stotz Ballets as well. So all of those things were going crazy, but we did catch a few, her and I did catch a few older movies. I'm finally getting to the point where I'm seeing a lot of the past movies that were on my list. It's also an ever, ever, ever growing list, even when you're just looking towards the past. But I think I'm finally starting to get caught up with where I want to be, and maybe, hopefully, I'll start seeing some more new movies soon. I'm just gonna run through the three that are on my mind right now that I know I saw. The very first one being Control. That's that documentary about Ian Curtis. I mentioned it last episode, or some other time on the channel, about Joy Division frontman Ian Curtis, and I thought the movie was... Hmm. I almost wanted to say charming there, but it's definitely not because it's a very destructive story. I would say that the documentary overall is like a cozy one. It is a nice one. It gives you a good intro into what was going on behind Joy Division and was powering their very moody post-punk music. I think the reenactments or recreation of the band was done really well, especially when you see the side-by-side -side footage, all of that. However, I think that it was not a very good insight on what all was going on. From my basic knowledge, it was much darker than that and much, I don't know, it just seemed oversimplified. Still really enjoyable and intriguing movie that I would recommend. So intriguing to the point that Kaylee has already gotten, not Peter Hook's book, but, ah, what is her name? Ian's wife, oh my goodness, Ian wife's, Ian's wife's book about the whole situation and about her experience. Next, that same trip in New Mexico, we watched In Bruges, which I wanna go back to Belgium so, so, so bad. That movie didn't really make me wanna go back to Bruges, but I really want to go back to Belgium. I was there almost exactly a year ago. You guys are probably familiar with that movie, so I'm gonna move on to another one that you probably are familiar with too, Once Upon a Time in the West, an insane, Western by Sergio Leone. This is the end all Western, I guess, when Western was such an iconic, or I guess now it's an iconic, when Westerns were such an oversaturated entity in movies for good reason. Like you can't even dispute Westerns in cinema and what they did. Uh, but this movie was a curveball that took this oversaturated genre and created a beautiful story. Um, comparing it to, of course, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I think that is more of like a good book, whereas this is more of an adventure. I don't know, that is such a bad description, oh my goodness. Me and my friends were talking about it just the other night. Once Upon a Time in the West, though, look it up. <laughs> look up Once Upon a Time in America, too. Um, such like in-depth worlds and really amazing stories. It'll keep you, it'll keep you strapped in all two, three hours, however long that movie is, because they're all long ones, that's for sure. And finally, it is time to finish off this video with some music, my favorite music that released in March. There you go. I need to figure out a more efficient way of seeing what music released in March that I've been listening to because Spotify always just says 2018. That doesn't help me. Spotify, oh, today was the Spotify IPO, which is crazy. Don't know how that's doing. Haven't kept up with it, but this is the end of the video. Hope you guys can do me one last favor and have a good day for me. Until the next video, <laughs> that's it. And then I'm gonna finally leave you with one last clip, which is Carol Christian Powell's mashable, hammerable, pardonable, what's the correct term there, shoes. Crazy, crazy things, a real, real collector's item, and the video is really cool too. Peace out, you guys.
just like a bitch. My bankroll AO 400 K4 vehicle paint job look like ashy ankles on Django interior look mango. I'm a devil, I'm a villain. Aggressive driver with a casual expression. See a black hole. Sometimes they get worse and sometimes they help. I should do little, but I'm still driving. Villain, a maniacal tyrant, hear footsteps, adapt to your environment, the jungle, all you suckers with the rap jargon, type of rap you find on the rack at a bargain, type of crap probably getting smacked off the margin, Willis Reed, 72, licks at the garden, New York, this ain't no new talk.